part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Burgoyne, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast, the podcast dedicated to all things Kryptonian, including Superman, Supergirl, Krypton. We are part of the Press Play Podcast Network, and I am your host, Tyler, the man of steel, the Superman of blue, actually the man of tomorrow. Man, I'm tired. I got to get a break from these kids. And I'm recording with James, the man of steel, the Superman of red. What's up, James Cole? What's up, Tyler? Oh, these kids be running me down, man. I think I'm like, I think I'm aging in dog years. (laughs) <laughs> they wear you out dude they have worn me out so much this past week i've also yeah. had a couple of things happen that's kind of been negative to myself and it's dealing with so yeah yeah but hey we're gonna uh, talk some don't fun you hate stuff. don't you hate the downs of life uh yeah <laughs> um so how you been, man? Uh, not too bad. Uh, this this week's just been really busy. Work and uh, work and the kids and home and everything's just been <coughs> pretty jam packed. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We got some news to get to. We're gonna crack the news open because we got a lot of news actually. The first thing is. We know that Discovery's taken over and it's kind of doing its thing. And I haven't heard the final ruling on this, but Batgirl was originally developed to be an HBO Max original. And now they're talking about a theatrical release. And I ran a poll on it and it seemed like people were leaning towards theatrical for it. Um, but what are your thoughts on it, James? Um, I mean... If it goes theatrical, um, I mean, I would just, I would assume probably that it's more, um, that it's a, a, was, was shot for a little bit of a lower budget, you know? Yeah. I mean, we, okay. Um, and for comparison, which would make it profitable. Shazam was what, <coughs> excuse me, 90 to a hundred million. Um, Bad Girls being reported like at 80 million. And it makes you wonder like what they do. Now, if you're going to release theatrical, do you pump more money in it for better special effects? Do you do some reshoots? Um, you know, pump up some of the post, you know, um, we still don't have a date or anything on this film. I, I don't know. Like I like the idea of theatrical, but I also like the idea of having something cool because we never got to see what this kind of movie looks like. Yeah. The HBO Max original like superhero movie. So that was one of the things that they had talked about that we had talked about. Like, what would that look like? Um. So I don't I don't know, you know? Yeah. Um. I mean, I was excited for it to come to HBO Max. And if that... If that ends up being the case, I'll be just as happy to watch it on HBO Max since I'm already paying for it. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't I love having some of my superhero content at home that the first time I, I the first time to see everything, I don't think requires a big screen. You, you know, know a, I kind a of theater big screen. Now, if you got an 86 at home or something, then that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of, I kind of lean towards, you know, HBO Max on this. Um, I wanted that excitement of seeing something special at home and not having to go to the theater. I don't want to. I don't want to have the delays, you know what I mean? Because when they put things into theaters, they have to, 
um, they look at their whole slate. Readjust. Yeah, they have. Yeah, they have to move things around. They have to pick the spots they think it'll do. Do do its competition with you know the with its actual competitive studios along with you know what other projects do they have coming out um and i think doing it on hbo max would allow you to choose a a date of your choosing you know instead of having the movie sit on the shelf for how long before it's ready to come out and it's been done for a year yep and we still don't know how it plays into the whole um flash uh movie and world and all that since everything gets shifted um but we'll just wait and see speaking of shifting we'll get into more here in a minute but shazam's date release date's been pushed back a week or up a week i think back a week it's like now the 21st of december because i guess it's actually happening james after what Oh, 15 years, 13 years. We're getting the sequel to Avatar. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The way so, of water. So much that people are like, if the, if they're going to have Avatar two, three, four. And all I can think is, I really hope it does well <laughs> because you're making this sequel 13 years later. And do people even remember the first Avatar? And do they care? Um, I mean, I liked the first Avatar. I had the extended cut on Blu-ray, and um, I watched it a you know a few times. I I thought it was a really good movie, very ambitious, and I was looking forward to seeing what could be crafted next. I liked Avatar. I thought the story was eh, but I liked the visuals. And some of my favorite visuals was when it was the humans like in the mechs or in the helicopters and things like that. Um, and I was curious to see where it would go next. And here we are 13 rough years later, because I don't even remember when Avatar came out. I'm just estimating because it was before Jenny and I were married. Um, and all I can think is this movie better has some amazing, like I better feel like I am immersed in like, the most unrealistic world possible <laughs> for it to blow my mind. Oh, uh, I mean, cause that was the whole point of the, the first one was the blow James Cameron's mind. pumped a ton of money into it. You know, I mean with his national geographic stuff, um, uh, investing in the, the, uh, submarine and the scanning technology to go down to, um, the Marianas trench to take, you know, digital scans of the terrain and stuff to use for Avatar underwater. I mean, that's pretty awesome. And this is now the Avatar huh, podcast. Uh, but yeah, Shazam moved out of its way, which I think is smart. Um, another piece of little small, because the big news is CinemaCon happened. And when CinemaCon happened, we got a lot of little news and a lot of things. And that's what we're kind of breaking. Cause I read the Shazam thing uh, today, I believe. And yeah, that's one I didn't see. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one was released right at the start of CinemaCon, Like I think the first day or right before it started, the script for the black Canary film is done and they are prepared to start filming. And this is one of those I had forgotten about that. They were going to do a black Canary movie for HBO max. Yeah. With journey Smollett. Yeah. So right there, and that's why I'm kind of like build maybe your own film universe on HBO Max. So keep Batgirl there, drive people to your product. Um, well, I think if you I think if you have a portion of an ongoing shared universe on HBO Max, um, as well as like your theatrical <laughs> movies, you, you put out your bigger budget theatrical movies and then they come over to HBO max and you know, you can see where it all fits in. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. Maybe cross my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> it's ambitious. <laughs> and then the other 
big thing. Uh, and then we'll get into more of the CinemaCon breakdown is we officially got the announcement of the Batman two or what I'm calling right now, the Batman returns. <laughs> the Batman, the squeakle. <laughs> well, I mean, think the first movie, 89 was called Batman. This one is the Batman. The sequel is called Batman returns. So this is going to be the Batman returns or the Batman comes back. <laughs> Or the Batman continues. <laughs> so, yay. I mean, I'm excited. What, what do you want to see out of a sequel for the Batman? Now that we know we're getting number two. Uh, um, I def, uh, I think I want to see a small a small time jump. I, I think cause well, I think part of that is going to be bridged in like the penguin series. Yeah. And maybe yeah. even potentially the Arkham series, but I think, I think I want a small time jump. I want to see some evolution to like his suit, some evolution to, um, um, his gadgets. Like I think, I think with the Batman, like the final confrontation where he uses the bomb to generate the smoke. I think now he's going to utilize smoke as a tool. You know what I mean? Like just see some things, um, see some things stem from this, uh, like Batman learning, um, getting better each time he goes out. And then, um, I mean, as villains go, um, like, I don't know. I haven't thought too hard on what ones would fit. And that's, that's part of my, I feel like that's my, that's part of my complaint. Go ahead. No, I think he has a very realistic world, but at the same time, there is a there is a craziness to it. So I don't, I don't. I feel like you could do more than what we're thinking you can. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's honestly. I don't think it's as grounded and as limited as Nolan's movies were. There, I yeah. expect it. I expect it to reach a little bit further into the fantastical the the comic book aspect of it and that's mainly what i'm hoping for um is, is going down that road um not not your drastic change from batman returns to batman forever yeah you know um but i think you can i think you can easily continue down that route without changing like the tone and the and the Gotham, the 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 character that the city, you know, provides to Batman and to his Rogues Gallery. Yeah. Um. Obviously, one of my, I mean, one of my favorite characters that I want to see done very well is Bane. Um. You know, we've got like one or we've got like a half out of two <laughs> <laughs> a half point out of two two uh uh portrayals yeah you know tom Har- i enjoyed tom hardy's performance and i mean i enjoy tom hardy he's he's really good and and you know the movie is the movie's pretty good but I don't think that it was nailed. Yeah. It was getting there and then it wasn't. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, there, there's some things we've said about like, like going to that line and pulling back, you know, talking about projects, movies and shows and things like that, going to that line and then pulling back. It's like, why can't you be on that line? Why can't you ride that line? 
Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. We will just, like you said, okay, I want, and I said this before, you know, of course you should change the costume up a little bit, little tweaks here and there. That's just the evolution. I want Snow in Gotham. I want the Court of Owls to be woven into the story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't want the Joker. Owls. I like the idea of having like maybe the Joker and the Riddler and stuff and we see are locked up. And like we have a scene because I, I was saying to Brian the other day, like if Matt Reeves, they had talked about doing like four films or whatever or five films or something. I was like, do the fourth film. It's just an Arkham movie. Like it's Batman, like almost like lost in Arkham, locked in Arkham or something. And because Matt Reeves has the horror chops. Um, I would love to see them incorporate Robin because I feel like the drama of just it's there. Like the way he took interest in that kid, the mayor's son. And I, you know, I shared it with you thing that there's only one year of comics where Batman did not have Robin. Yeah. And like some way. And then Robin's been around for a long time. So stop with this. Batman needs to work by himself. Crap. No, we're done with that. And I, I would love to see a, like Robin come in because we have not had Batman and Robin together in live action. We've always danced around it somehow. And I'm, I'm tired of it. Give me a good Batman and Robin team up. And I think you could do it in Matt Reeves first because people always say it's stupid or it doesn't make sense. I'm like a rich man adopts a child that witnessed the same horrors that he did to hopefully keep that kid from becoming him. And the kid wants to vengeance and he channels it differently than Bruce did. I mean, it's the same story as like almost like Alfred and Bruce in a way, <laughs> you know, so there's parallels there and it can be really well done. And then what I would like to see, and I think this could be interesting is have the canes show up. And I want to see Alfred butt heads with Thomas's sister. And the idea that they come in trying to take over or do something about Wayne enterprises because Bruce isn't doing this. And it was part of her family and like have something about why they didn't stay around to help Bruce as a child. Or she says something about why did you take him? and We didn't. I don't know. I think it'll be very interesting to see live action representation together with Bruce's his other side of the family. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like the idea of the court of owls. Cause I, I thought what was really nice. One of the interesting points that I liked about the Batman was the fact that the, the Wayne murders is still unsolved, you know, nothing, mm-hmm. nobody knows what happened. So they posit, obviously the random act of violence. They posit the Maroni story. And, and then also Alfred's Falcone story. So they give you three versions of how the Waynes could have been killed in that movie. And I think, especially if you plug in the Court of Owls, <laughs> that that could give you at least another scenario as to how the Waynes could have died. It's so also another this, bird. this something that always... Um, is driving him continuously. It, it's just something new, you know. Like yeah. he's still driven by that murder, um, but also he's trying to be better than he was in this last movie. And <clears throat> and also, I mean, all the bird references that we get in the Batman, and an owl is just another bird. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. They um the Court of Owls kind of seems like a no-brainer and then the way that they had uh the the journalist Elliot. See everybody says and Thomas hush. Elliot. And um, I'm just like I feel like if you tried to do hush you would have to do it almost like an Agatha Christie murder story or something where you'd have to introduce a bunch of new characters. One of them would not be using their real name. Um, 
and it wouldn't be true to the book. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing about the mystery of Hush, like in the book, is once we know who it is, and it's, we know it's Tommy Elliot. Like, um, well, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be, it's, it would, it's gonna be different, but I think that a Tommy Elliot being Hush, it would obviously have to be an original story because, as we all know, the story of Hush, um, the character hasn't had any real impact since. Um. It's a so very, we've had a whole conversation about Loeb and his endings and how you need the Riddler and you need other characters to uh, to be in there. And even if you stripped it down. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it it would be it would definitely be a different story um, than the comics. Uh, but. Uh, you know. It's also a villain that a lot of a lot of the general audience wouldn't know. It's true. And it would, it would definitely drive up some interest in that character and the book and stuff. Um, but I mean, that also kind of seems like a, a no brainer now that, you know, cause now he's grown as well. The Tommy Elliot, the son, he would be grown as well. He would be Bruce's age. And, to find out at that point that Bruce's parents had Bruce's father had his father killed. Obviously that would drive him to want to, um, well, potentially ruin Bruce's life. So it could be more of a personal war on Bruce. Um, as well as Batman. Yeah. As well as Batman and trying to track down hush. Um, and then, I mean, you, it would definitely take some finagling if you were trying to put Hush, Hush's storyline like that into a movie that also maybe involves the court of owls. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I think, I think those would be, I think those would be an interesting story to tell in the next one. Because I'm already know, I already know that I'm not going to. I'm not going to get the, the stories tra- translated from page to screen like that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see elements and that's one thing I'm looking forward to. So, you know, what, what, what pulls, what stories have they, are they trying to pull from next? We will see. This is, we have ideas, well, people. Yeah, well, you know, that's part of, that's part of um, these characters who have existed for so long, you know? Um, so many different varieties, so many variations. Um, when you, when you get some of these even de- even pretty good movies, it's, they're pulling from a lot of different places. And blend and blending it all together mm-hmm. to make something unique from the creative's point of view. I mean, you ain't lying. I mean, that's 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 how that's how Marvel built their their brand of all of their characters. Um, you know, pulling all those pieces and blending them together. In that way, you you get a faithful to the comics yet original because it's not just one version. It's true. It's very true. This is James's story. It's very true. (laughs) So CinemaCon, lots of things have happened. Let's try to, let's try to tackle what we can. Um, There was a trailer shown for black Adam. And from the description is it looks awesome (laughs) that Black Adam is definitely an anti-hero. And there's a scene of him catching a missile. And it looks like it's great in tone. (laughs) So we know that people got to see a a full trailer for Black Adam. 
that sucks for us who can't afford to go to CinemaCon or even, you know, enjoy it. We have the internet. Why is it not leaked? I know, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that... Uh, I've been trying to read things and f- find out, like, what it was said. But... Yeah, I've been thinking about it lately. And... Um, uh, like, they, we've got Super Pets coming out in July. So, <coughs> you know, there's going to be... There's going to be a slight ramp up for that. And then as soon as that's over, it's all Black Adam. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't I don't expect Super Pets to go on. Like, if we don't see that freaking trailer with the drop of Super Pets, you know? (laughs) Yep. Um, And then we got there was footage shown of Aquaman. And I guess it looks good because part of the plot we now know of Aquaman 2 is Aquaman has to partner with Orm because Black Manta is building an army. Okay, cool. I would love to see some footage from Aquaman, but it's cool. That's that's a little ways off yet. so That's why I'm just like, cool. And then they showed <laughs> footage of the Flash movie. And I guess a clip that they showed showed Michael Keaton in the suit. And he said the want to get nuts, let's get nuts line. Come on. The, they tweaked the uh, the logo. It's now a little bit more dark and black uh, for The Flash. Compared to as bright and silver it was. Or not so yeah, gold it was. I like the way how they gave it some curvature and the... Mm-hmm. And the, the letters flared out a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And then other news is Michael Shannon is supposed to be back as Zod in the Flash movie. That's an interesting... Uh, Michael Shannon's an amazing actor. So I'm excited to see what that actually means and what he'll bring to the role. Um, because of what kind of Zod or where Zod is or however they just decide to do Zod in this film. So that's very interesting to me. Um, yeah, I'm just like, who else is going to be in this thing? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for, I don't know. Um, I mean, I still hope. I still hope for it to be centered on, on Barry with a lot of people in there. I still hope that, you know, yeah, I, I always that kind it's of think made of like, more for Barry and less for the ensemble. You know, I think about Captain America, civil war, how that movie was basically Avengers 2.5. And You know, they, 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 even as stuffed as that was, they still was able to focus on Steve. So that's, uh, that's good. And let's see, what else did I miss from CinemaCon? It was, it was like a lot, but also hard to kind of s- sift through. Uh, we did get the announcement though that the Harley Quinn TV series is getting a spinoff that will focus on Kite Man and Golden Glider. As they moonlight as criminals to support their purchases of Noonan's Gotham Seediest Dive Bar. We're getting a Kite Man series. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I was like, okay, I'm in. All right. <laughs> like, I'll check it out. I mean, Kite Man is hilarious in the show. Yes. Kite Man. Yeah, I want to rewatch the show just because of Kite Man. Well, Jamie's sister hadn't seen it, so we actually kind of put it on, and she watched the whole thing. Um, so I just recently rewatched pretty much the whole thing myself. Um, with them, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Kite Man is great. <laughs> Every time he's on screen, you're like. Like, why is Kite Man so cool? Why why is he so funny? And have you have you ever read the Tom King 
I think it's a tie-in. It's part of the joke, the War of Jokes and Riddles, Kite Man story. You know, I heard of it. Um, oh, excuse it's, me. It's oh. really, really, really good. Is it? it? I I heard of it back on um, DC Comic Squadcast back when they were doing the Rebirth era. So it was years ago when it had come out when I actually listened to them talk about it, but I have not read it myself. It I read the trade, and like I said, it's in that trade, so I can't say too much on it. Um, but yeah, Kite Man, woohoo. <laughs> so we're going to move on here, and we're going to take a look at comics. Hey. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Um, We actually have, we're we're, now that we're kind of caught up, we're going to try to review back to our format of reviewing comics in the show. Instead of having to do a whole episode just on comics. So all I read this week was Action 1042 and Dark Knights of Steel 6. Which one do you want to start with? Um, I read Dark Knights of Steel. Um, I just, just because I'm kind of picky about my comics, like I'm it, at lunch at work, I kind of take my tablet in so that way it's not like getting my comics on the table or right. eating sure over my not- comic or anything like that. You sure, she's not so. like that guy's reading comics. <laughs> like, no, sure. people know I read comics. They they know I do a Superman podcast. <laughs> He's like, I'll bust your face, man. <laughs> um, that's cool. Uh, which so, one do you want to do? Uh, well, you know what? I uh, I can talk about. Uh, Dark Knights, and if you want to do action. Sure. Let's start up. Dark Knights of Steel number six. Take us there, Skitch. Hold on. Oh my god. My tablet is going wonky on me right now. While we're waiting for your tablet, let's just touch on something else real quick. Young Justice. What did you think of this week's episode? Because this week's episode, and I highlighted this on Twitter, gave me something that I recently did a podcast with, with Digging for Kryptonite. Do you know what that was, James? What's that? They actually put Feora and Ursa in an episode together. So many times is it either they pick Ursa or they pick Feora. Or they don't, and Ursa is getting rep- recognized. And I did think it was interesting, though. Spoilers for Young Justice: that Ursa is Zod's wife and not Feora, because it's usually Feora is his wife, and Ursa is like an assistant. Um. So I I thought that was cool. Yeah, I I definitely it. caught the Ursa part. I must have I must have missed the um. I normally I I watch it at least He's, twice and I've only watched it once so because he says Feora uh, and uh, she is with who I think he said the other name but I was so excited I don't remember and they start doing the house of Zod for Zod for Zod love of Zod blah blah Zod blah, like doing the chanting and everything so. yeah well you could see that um, he did the uh they were doing a telepathic communication. So mm-hmm. that way that Connor couldn't hear him. 
You so, said we play this out long. Yeah, it's a long game. And Forager so. is going to stay with Forager because Forager wants to be with Forager because Forager is lonely and found someone to love named Forager. <laughs> yes, yes, Forager did. Forager loves Forager. Um, so, Dark Knights of Steel, number six. Uh, open at the Kingdom of Storms and Constantine is in mourning. He's drinking heavily. Sounds exactly like Constantine. Um, he's supposed to go to the uh, coronation <laughs> of uh, Anissa, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Um, he's talking to Tim Drake. So right there, Saul's our conversation with which Robin that was. We're like, I think it's Jason because isn't Tim on the other side? We're yeah. Like, We're both like, I think so. Yeah, he's a spy in the court. Um, then, uh, Constantine tells him he knows he's a spy, uh, blasts him out the door, um, gets him, uh, uh gives him up to, um, gives him up to, uh, Anissa. Yeah, I'm fairly certain. Um, yeah, gives him up to her. She's blasting him. Um, Constantine... Uh, allows her to, or or convinces her to, um, let him return back to his kingdom with a message. Um, so he's there. He wants to report directly to Batman, but he is talking to the Queen and Cal and Zala and Diana and Waller. Um, says that uh, the Kingdom of Storms. Uh, is coming. Jefferson Pierce has been killed uh, by Zala, and you know nobody nobody believes it. Um, Why would they? Yeah, they made up a lie about my sister to justify a war, and she says, "Did they?" And um, they say a whole ship full of people witnessed Zala kill the king. And so Clark, I mean, Cal, Cal, his name's not Clark, Cal. Cal. I'm going to go find Just out. like another Cal we'll talk about a, a, in a little bit. Yep. Sorry. Very interesting. Cal does um, what? <laughs> uh, he's he's going to fly off and he's going to try to, you know, talk and be peaceful because, you know, some people like to talk things out. Um,. Yeah, he flies to Jimmy Olsen, who's in the observatory tower, which is a kind of a cool gig for Jimmy Olsen in this world. I would uh, agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, he says, I have to try to put a stop to all of this, and Cal flies off. Uh, Constantine summons Etrigan, says he needs to speak to the man, the demons... Ha- uh, does he say, yeah, I wish to speak to your head demon, being Ra's al Ghul. Oh, that was cool. The head of the demon. Yeah, that was an interesting. I was expecting blood, of course, right? Jason blood, but. Yeah, and this Ra's al Ghul is. <sighs> now you got Literally the head of the demon. <laughs> yeah, he bonded himself with Etrigan. Yeah. Um. Constantine is asking if he can bring them back, the king and um, Jacob, uh, the the king's son who was who was murdered. Um, he says he can't he can't uh, revive Jefferson because he has no heart left in his chest. He's got a big gaping wound, um, but possibly Jacob, and uh, that it it won't be exactly him how he returns. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we all kind of, anytime the Lazarus is, is brought up, you know, they, they don't, they don't come back the same. And and what did uh, Joss Whedon have to say about that? Pet cemetery. (laughs) Right. Um, 
Constantine asks what it will cost him. He says the children. He wants the Titans. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, have, um, I'm curious as to who the Titans is going to be in uh, in this world. You know, because we've mm-hmm. got we've already got a number of Titans members kind of there or locked up. Like we saw a version of a Flash locked up. We saw. Uh, Dick Grayson, you know, we've seen most of the Robins. Um, <coughs> Cyborg, I don't think is going to really be a thing. We'll see how <laughs> we'll see if I that mean, comes up. You could you just make him like a blacksmith who's got like implanted armor or something on him. He's more like a armored knight or something more than a cyborg like we're used to. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just a curious thing. Um, then Cal is flying to Amazonia to the to Themyscira, and uh, they fire arrows at him. He comes to land on the island. They attack him like heavily. Mm-hmm. He stop this! I don't want to fight. Um, for someone who doesn't want to fight, you've done a lot of fighting. I was attacked by a lot of people. No man is allowed to set foot on Amazonia. I haven't set foot on Amazonia. He's floating. That's Lois awesome. says, right? Lois says a technicality isn't really in the spirit of the rule. And Hippolyta pulls a sword and runs Cal through the stomach. She says, you found me. And he wakes up tied to tied in a little a dungeon crypt type thing. Yeah. Um, tied up with the lasso of truth. Um, she, Lois asks, does it hurt? Uh, yes, it hurts. It's more pain than I've ever felt before. Um, I was trying to keep that to myself, but I'm completely failing here. Uh, she said, yes, you'll find you can't lie for the same reason you can't move. It's a very special rope. Um, but your attempted stoicism is noted. Um, and he, he Cal is trying to discuss that he uh, he's trying to stop war, um, that his never his sister could never harm a child. Um, so I don't know if that's the truth, but you certainly believe what you're saying. Lois says, I don't like this, uh, this sudden escalation, all paths leading to war. I gather information for Apollida. I'm very good at it, but I sense I'm missing something here. It's like there are invisible strings controlling the situation. I now don't know who's holding up, who's holding them, and I've run out of time to find out. And that is because the Amazons have set sail to war. See that that's like one thing. Like I get tired of like what the Amazons are supposed to be about peace and warriors, but they always seem to be very quick to fight, um, stubborn. And not diplomatic. What? And everything. They're very. I don't know. They're very. Like, sometimes they're depicted very cold hearted. Yeah. Well. Oh, excuse me. The, um. And the, the Amazons of, of myth were very, um. Um. Incredibly. Uh, warrior minded, you know. I mean, they they lift they lift they supposedly only lifted swords when they had to, but they trained for it constantly. Um, so it was, you know, I think it was still a quick. Uh, it's still a quick judgment. I think mm-hmm. I think there's a little more diplomacy in the idea of Wonder Woman in the Amazons. Um going out to man's world and, and in the comic book realm of trying to bring peace. Oh, I agree. I just think it's interesting because how people talk about Wonder Woman represents love. I'm like, maybe, but the Amazons represent killing you before you have a chance to say hi. Yeah. (laughs) Now you set foot on your Island and they're (laughs) just free to decapitate you. Right. That doesn't sound very peaceful and friendly to me. Yeah. 
But what do we know? I don't know. I, I think, you know, I mean, we've talked about this. I think people get this one idea in their head, especially about characters and the version of a character they like. And that that character can't deviate from that. Nope. You know, that character can't become three dimensional and have nope. conflicts that that eat away at them from the inside or even judgment calls to make that make that that people would say is questionable. You know what? I'm going to say this right here. So <laughs> it's no lie. Like I'm friends with uh, Anthony over at digging for kryptonite. And he's been, and I was a guest on his Donner like retrospective series. Yeah. That he just finished up and he was talking about the Superman movies and you know, how Clark is and how Superman's depicted and he said, you know, I, I sat back, and I'm paraphrasing here, but what it came down to was the fact that those films are made from like this, you know, the silver age of the idea that Clark is a god pretending to be a man or uh, being a god being a man compared to what we look at in so many versions is a man with the powers of a god. And so, you know, Superman has a different paradigm of thought. And when you look at it like that, it makes so much more sense of all the other depictions that we have now of Superman. And why, you know, so many people like the Reeve version because it's a different take on the character. Neither of them are completely wrong or right. But yeah, yeah. I mean, but action. We got action to talk about. We got action. So let me get action comics here for us. You ready for this? I am. 1042 with James on the cover <clears throat> and some <laughs> ugly grapoid looking things. So we're back to having the art by Frederici. And at the start of it, we have a um, little <clears throat> back history filling you in on the Philosians. It's Lois writing. <sighs> Dang it, James. And I know I started something. We have um, see, now I just blinked on her name. What the heck? Laya? The Philosian. Oh, um, Theola. Yeah. I was like, man, I just blinked. Tho Theola. <laughs> yeah, something Theola. like that. She is. Yeah, in Theo. The, a a uh, Baca. Baca tomb chamber from Star Wars. In the <laughs> fortress with Kellex. And John shows up. He's, you know, he startles his mom and they're talking. And he says, he tells her, to, Lois says, hang in there. Clark might be saving your whole world right now, but he entrusted your care to us. And then we turn the page and there's Clark in his loincloth or what I like to call the James cloth. And he <laughs> and then Knight are just punching their way through fighting. And we see like he started the uprising. And this is actually the War World Saga Part 7. And as they're fighting, Omac shows up. And Clark says, don't do this, Omac. They'll never give you what you promised. And Omac's like, how would you know what they promised? Because I'm an idiot. Ho, 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 ho. But it makes a good story. And then we see that the teacher is there with the huge beast. Oof. Dang it. And then they mention Constantine's mind. We're not sure where he's at. The fight continues. And Superman, Clark, Cal, James is battling Omac. And he's talking to her. He's trying to give her like a way out. And she said, you let it happen, Blue. You knew you couldn't win this. You knew you were getting weaker. So why? Why did you come here? He's, he still whips her. 
I know you, Omak, you're better than this, but if you're really willing to betray us all for a promise from Mongol, give it your best shot. Yeah. I like it says, uh, should we do what's right only when we're stronger than our enemies? When we're at our best? When we're hurt or outmatched or we've lost a step, should we sit back and do nothing? And you're just like, okay, you win, Clark. <laughs> right. <clears throat> you win and they see that um where is it they state that he has an orphan box i still remember what it's called and if they get that from him they can change the tide so they start fighting and then mongol shows up but it's not mongol it's Right? It's one of his kids. That, it's like his son or whatever. Or is that a Mongol? Um, this Mongol is like... Well, is the new Mongol. It's like... So it's the main dude? Yeah. Okay. I couldn't tell. He just looked different. And it threw oh, him. you mean the, the guy on top of the, the beast? With no, the orphan he, box? No. When he shows up and he's like, each day I find you less amusing Kryptonian. Uh, best to kill oh. you after all. And they're fighting. Oh, okay, yeah. That's Mongol. That's, that's the main guy, yeah. And then Superman starts an awesome speech about what he's doing to the people. They, they've never had powers, gems, heat, visions, or the strength of gods, but they'll never give up. They're not lesser. They are more than we are. Can't you see that? Can you really not see what I see in them? These people are stronger than you ever or I will ever be. They've been through trials that should have killed them. And the battle rages on. And Superman says, such arrogance. You think caring for others is a weakness, but underestimating them is yours. And then, that's why we'll win. Then we see that Lois is looking for a piece of the Genesis. Um, that close-up shot of Mongol done by Frederici is awesome. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> Look at them teeth. And then Lois sees John Henry, who she realized has the piece, the fragment of the Genesis energy, and they touch it. And then when they touch it, they're basically hearing what's going on. She says, that was Clark's voice. This morning, Thela glowed just like that. Is this thing causing Thela's seizures? And they believe that a piece of it can heal her. And it ends with, I think something big's happening. And this is next, the War World Revolution. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, um, I just, I keep saying it every time we talk about this action run it's really good um the art is fantastic along with it the whole way just yeah i'm enjoying um johnson's uh character work in this um like superman is he is incredibly superman spirited you know Mm -hmm. um he gets the character. Never get absolutely. He never gives up. He gets never surrenders. Beaten. <laughs> yeah. Never give up. Never surrender. The best episode of Star Trek. <laughs> Everyone's like, what are they talking about? Star Trek. <laughs> right. Um <laughs> kids yeah that's that's great um this war world saga is awesome um i really am looking forward to um seeing how it wraps up and I and i hope it i hope it lands uh very well i agree so it's been okay. such a long time since there's been like such a strong arc for Superman. That everyone seems to get it be on board with. Yeah. 
like like I've read a lot of Superman from all the way through from uh, I mean old stuff too, but uh, New Fifty Two up through modern stuff, and there's been a lot of good stories too that have come out since then. But a lot of people would argue against that. Um, but this is definitely one of the best in that entire um, entire time span. I agree. Okay, so it's time to move on and indulge ourselves in Superman and Lois. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right, for $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show. Like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All Star Superfans. Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast. Superman and Lois, Season 1, Episode 10. We're getting there, you know, because we'll be getting there waiting for Superman. (laughs) <laughs> I had a good laugh when you uh when you sent that when you sent that recording over to me. <laughs> I was like I was sitting there, I was like, Janine, can I borrow your phone real quick? And I'm in there like trying to find the where he start he says that line. She's like, What are you doing? I'm like, just just hold on. And I got it and I sent it to you, then I explained it to her and she just looks at me like, What the heck, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That was that's hilarious. So I'm going to say this right now. This episode was really good. This was really well done. The acting from everybody was amazing. It was top notch all around. And that's biz- bizarros in a bizarre world. First of all, what I found interesting is. So let's just start at the beginning. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Everyone in this world is emo and goth. Bizarro world just means everyone's goth. Okay? (laughs) Everyone looks like they're about to shoot the club scene with the Wachowskis. (laughs) Right. Um, It starts and it flips the title card. It's red. The music sounds like it's even backwards. And we see Super Red flying through the uh, the tunnel and everything is red and when he lands on the other side he sees Anderson's dead body and a bunch of green K he flies out into the space and we see a red sun that is square and he looks at the world and it is a cube yeah that was awesome I was I was Totally geeking out when they freaking went for the, the the cube planet. Um, and I like how they did. Uh, well, so he flies to the fortress. He says to his fortress, he goes and he meets the hologram of his of the other cow, his mom, and he's talking backwards. And then he's like, ah, and he pauses and he like, and then he starts talking to match them. I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, because since he comes out of the portal and he start and he's saying anything out loud, it's coming out backwards. It's coming out different, and uh, we have subtitles as to what he's saying because he's speaking normally from where he's from. So then, yeah, he has to pause and flip it. He, I love how he's just like looking on his face. He's like, ah, dang it, it's <laughs> such a pain in the butt, right? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Better not do this the whole episode. Uh, yeah, well, like, I mean, how can you communicate backwards? 
You know uh, what I mean? You know, you know how? I open my phone and I say something into my phone in GarageBand and then I tap on the audio file and it pops up and I hit the little thing that says play in reverse and then I play it in reverse. <laughs> there you go. And then to you, it's coming out fine because that's how we're communicating here. Just throwing that out there to everybody. Um, cause that's what I said to Jania. But anyways, um, and then he goes, we see a lot of cool stuff in the fortress. If you check out, there's uh, a security guard, which I'm like, why does he need a security guard? Um, it looks like a hologram of Kandor, a hologram of like the old fortress key, like the big gold key. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he flies to the farm. The farm is a wreck. We see John and Allie is on TV. Very interesting. Yeah, John John meets him at the fortress. They fly back to the farm. He says that he's all over TV. Um, Allie's got a big following. A big following. Like it's uh, it's all over the news throughout the whole episode that they're freaking petitioning and uh, marching all over the place. It's like Hitler. Just saying. Um, but any anyway, so Ali has this big following of people. That's scary because everybody underestimates her, and then. Um, and then he says what happened to my dad and Clark's like and he's like oh and he says he he says I knew he would fail he went to be a hero again and that was pretty deep if you think about it like that's pretty tough. well as we see as the episode goes on this this bizarro Superman, um, he starts inhaling kryptonite and green kryptonite. It's, it makes him stronger, but it's like a drug. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's what it looks like is, has done him in. Cause, uh, the white face. Yeah. And the cracks in his face and everything. Um, cause as the episode goes on and he starts to crack further and further, um, like he starts to like hunch over a little bit. Um, they, they, they contour in his cheeks and everything. They start to make him look more sickly until he goes white and all cracked. Mm-hmm. It's really well done. And one thing I really liked was we get the, uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden it cuts and it says Bizarro John L. And then it goes back and it starts to tell us his story. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. Um, I like this. And it was cool because it let us catch up with this character. We found out the, the, the family is famous. Um... Yeah, they're like celebrity in this. And which is interesting that he'd be living in the farm. Well, that's what I said. Did you know? I said I said straight up I said why are they on the farm? <laughs> okay? Like I said besides set requirements and all that crap, why are they on the farm? And she's like, "I don't know." I'm like, "Okay. Thanks." But whatever. And that's how I interpret, and then we get on it. We kind of get a reason for it later, um, but where where did my thing go? Uh, they're famous. I put this the emo world, and she the way they did Lois's look and everything is she had hair that looked very much like Margot Kidder. Would you th- yeah, 
I could see that. If you look at the way they did her hair in this scene. Because in this scene, her hair looks like Margot Kidder, like in the nightgown scene from Superman the movie. Right. Um, and we have, what's interesting is we see how Superboy John L. comes, debuts himself. Okay. And I thought that he saved somebody. And they're like, well, how else was I, what was I supposed to do? And she, they're talking about our 15 year old's going to be a superhero. Right. <clears throat> and he's coming. Then they've yeah. got a publicist and they've got a yeah. freaking. Yeah. And they're like, what, what's your name going to be? And Jordan gets like a line of dialogue finally. <clears throat> Superboy. And then he goes quiet again. Because, you know, God forbid Jordan get to talk and do anything. <laughs> um, and then uh, he starts doing this hand signal thing. That's like hit, we see him and like doing his um, like press tours and all this type stuff. And he just keeps throwing out the Superboy hand signal thing. And he's with his dad and they're doing it together. And he's, you know, John L., son of Cal L. And then there's a bank robbery, and he does it on his own. And we see uh, this is where Lois has an outfit on. I said looked like Ursa from the movies. Because the way it fell on her and everything, she looked very much like Ursa. Okay. And, and then we have the scene where John shows back up to the farm. He walks in and I'm like, oh, Janina, look, they have chairs just like ours, metal and uncomfortable and high. <laughs> I even have it says in my notes, hey, it's our chairs. Um, and then we get a great argument conversation about how Clark was doing his promotion for his shoe line, hosting the Kevins and President Seinfeld. <laughs> I like the President Seinfeld line. And I was like, I thought that was, that was brilliant. Yeah. I got, I chuckled at that one. I'm like, that's, that's good stuff right there. Um, and then we see, like we see the WB logo on a water tower. And when he meets his girlfriend, Misty, who leads John to Allie, we get a star city drop. And she says, Asked if he'd make him some tea, if he'd like to know the truth. And my first thought was, was the would the tea work on him? What's this tea made of? Yeah, that that I have no idea. And then it says, then we get cut Bizarro Lois Lane, and we see Lois leaving with Jordan. We see Cal and Lois fighting, uh, and they're arguing about where he's always gone where he's he's not there when they need him. He's talking about what he does supports the family and all this. And then we see that he's the one that burned down the barn. Yeah, he got real angry and breathed fire and burned down the bar. The barn. <laughs> and then we see when she drives off that you drive on the opposite side. And then we go to where John, uh, Lois is with her dad, and John L shows up. John and Lana, yeah, Lana who has powers, which I thought was interesting. But we, I just kind of chalked it up that she's using inhalers because that feels like that's still kind of a thing there, but. It's a thing there. I mean, she could be on XK inhalers or um, who knows? It's different earth. Maybe she's uh, eradicated. But at the same time, I don't feel like that was, they did that whole plan on the, on this place. Right. I don't think so either. I don't, I mean, cause he, um, Talro shows up later and he talks about, how they listened and I think he still called her Lana yeah he did um, 
So it's they probably the inhalers. They want it from Project 4377, the XK. Lois tries to reach John. We find out Rosetti is still evil on this side. Cal shows up. He's white. Um, he says, I have to save our son. We have John versus Clark. <coughs> Cut. Anderson. Now, I'll tell you straight up, Anderson's storyline was really strong. Yeah. When we, see, when we see that he comes through, he goes to merge with himself, and Allie loses her junk, and John uses his powers to kill the other Anderson. And he still he uh, fights with Lana. He flies. We get a uh, he finds Chrissy. Okay. Chrissy drops a line about Olsen on the Luther story. And um, he tries to communicate with them, even though he's talking backwards. And then he asks for Lois. Chrissy, you know, basically figures it out, gives him more to rendezvous with Lois. He meets Lois and Jordan and Jordan starts asking about his dad. Not knowing he's talking to the man who killed his father. Um, <clears throat> this is where I said it'd be great to pull out a smartphone and use the reverse feature. <laughs> um, right. And Jania says, God, he has to live with the look of that. Referring to how Jordan was reacting, learning that his father was dead. Um. And then we see, as he's doing this, we hear the the steps from the earlier where John and Clark were, where Lois goes up, and then Anderson shows up. And John L. Um, and him collide. He has one inhaler left. And Anderson starts talking to Cal. And they 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 talk. He talks backwards, but then they flip it around to where they're talking straight to each other, <coughs> which I th <coughs> excuse me, I thought was cool. And Clark has a he's and Anderson realizes that he was wrong. He admits to Clark he was wrong, and he asks him like, "The reason why you kept thing is because you have a family too, and that's why you didn't you didn't say everything." And Clark gets the great line of saying, "To me, everyone's worth saving." Yeah, it it was a it was really yeah it's really good. And then we get Tal Ro showing up. We have Clark versus Lana fighting Tal Anderson versus John. Anderson did, doesn't make it. Allie begins to merge and cut Bizarro Tal Ro. And dude, I'm gonna say up say I love this segment. I love Cal and Ta and Tal sitting there at the bar talking. And he tells him Lois is pregnant and tells him, I'm going to be an uncle. And he says, I bought us a, a place nearby. He's like here in Smallville. He's like, yeah, um, a farm with some land. And we find out Lana's a barmaid. Okay. I was hoping that he already married it, but whatever. And on this world, Tal and Lana get married and Cal is at his wedding together. And it's really great brother stuff. Where he's like, you're my brother, we'll be together. And then we get the shot a little bit later of, like you said, where he Cal looks sick. And, you know, Tal confronts him. And he says he's basically going along with Allie because of his wife. <coughs> and then it cuts back and we get um, Allie starting to merge. She tells John, this is what I didn't... She tells John Ill to take the pendant and go merge with his other self before she's fully merged. Would yeah. you still need the pendant? Yeah, that part that part bugged me a little bit. I was like, was like <laughs> Don't you need the pendant? But I guess not. And so he goes and Tal's holding Cal down and he, you know, he says, I you know, I uh I failed my brother here basically. And he lets Cal go. And then we get basically the same beat. We ended last episode on with a little bit more of 
John L's on the farm and he sees John. And yeah, that was it. There's a lot happened. I think it was a very well constructed episode. Um, I'm kind of glad we didn't get anything from John Henry because I feel like that had been kind of forced in the Bizarro world. Um, we didn't get to see Bizarro Kyle. That was that was cool. I could that was fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with just the the episode focusing on the family. Um, I was hoping and we got the to fact see. that John was is an ally of Allie on that Earth. I was hoping that we'd see Lucy on the other side, but we didn't. Um, but yeah, I really like this episode. I wanted to watch it again, but I just didn't have time. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to watch it a second time. Um, yeah, it's a really, it was a really good episode. I enjoyed it a lot, and I cannot wait for next week's episode. Yeah. I, 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 w- I want to see what happens. Um, is there going to be any merging? Is John going to get powers? Um, I, my thought is John's going to merge, and then whenever they split or whatever happens, he'll like retain powers or something for a while, and then maybe he'll lose them. Who like the Green Ranger? He'll have powers, and he won't have powers. They'll be failing him. <laughs> so, but it was we shall it was, see. It was very strong. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was really. Looking forward to it. It said on a bizarro world. I was like, yes, like, and then we got to see the poster. We got to see the 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 screenshots of them being all emo looking and stuff. Like, sweet. Like, this is interesting. And to get to see bizarro world, and I I thought the way that they did it was really good. The the way that they did the language. The I, I was happy they did the square planet and the sun. You know, yes. it was, they did a lot. They did a lot and, and very well. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add to it? Uh, um, anything else? No. Um, I mean, I, it, we covered it. It was a very great episode. Uh, it, it was done very well. The, the celebrity aspect, the um the kryptonite the poisoning the it was really good i agree i agree all right good listeners that's james and i's quick take for this week on the krypton report thank you reach out to us on social media let us know your thoughts and remember look out for the sky We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.